overnight traders, right? They went home at five o'clock and then the people that came in overnight were like, hey, you need to get me out of this position at the lowest price possible. When I come back to work tomorrow, I better not uh, be out at a bad spot. And so they just got down here and then boom, they covered shorts. It got back down there again, they covered shorts. And then eventually, you know, squeezed up and now we're seeing a little bit of push back down into that area as we're getting close to that open. All right, we are live. Good morning, Giles. Morning, Tommy. Morning, Cam. Morning, Uncle Stacy. Let's see what uh what the day brings for us here. As we can see, overnight inventory is pretty balanced, right? With uh, I mean, it's it'd be a, it'd be a tough tell. I would say it's sixty forty, just because that we have the point of control below the settle. But for the most part, a fairly balanced overnight session. We can see that the selling got cut off or shut off down here around these lows. As we see that 45 degree angle, we'll be looking for this to act as support. It comes right down to that T2 high, which makes sense because we have this balance zone below. We got to break out of balance. We're looking for buyers to step up and initiate at these prices in order to press the market higher. Uh, one of the key levels that we are looking for up here is this 7675 and then above that we have that old FOMC level 4181 or 8650 excuse me um going into today right if we don't see buyers willing to step up and initiate at these higher prices above balance right here's our balance zone above this balance zone and continue this price up and we start to see time spent and acceptance down inside this balance i'll be looking for that 40 20 uh that's been a big level lately and if we uh smash all these together that's kind of where we've seen the volume and the point of control sitting at right at that 41 20 so that makes sense that if buyers do accept these prices higher this would be the first chance that they get or first opportunity that they get in order to step up and take the market a bit higher um if they do not do that right it will be you know probably opposite side of balance 4080 would be that look you know maybe a brief stop we talked about this 4103 to uh 4190 4095 that could be a, a decent area as well um Today, and I'll just go over here. If we take a peek at the triple Q, which is the NASDAQ, we could even look at the NASDAQ futures just to make it a bit easier. But we can see the NASDAQ is running into resistance, right? The long term resistance off of the highs. So we know the NASDAQ carried the market up yesterday. We saw most of the bullishness or most of the upside in our heavier weighted sectors like Apple, you know, tech stocks. Uh, and so we'll be looking to see if that gets continuation today. We could see a brief pause or a bit of rotation or a bit of balance. Um, and then, you know, one thing that we want to remember, well, we'll use actually the bar chart. It'll be a little bit easier to see. One thing we want to remember, right? And we've talked about this before. When we start to see balance zones start to overlap each other. So if we start to see another balance here, so we had balance right here, right? We broke out balanced right here we broke out so let's say if we start to balance here that would be a sign telling us that this upside may be a bit overdone and may need to come back right maybe getting a little bit stale kind of how we saw on the way down you know we got a balance and then we got a, another balance and then another little balance right before finally breaking out so you know telling us that the trend to the downside was a little bit overdone and market maybe needed to rally to blow off some of these shorts that are in a little bit too late. So that same thing can happen to the upside. So we just want to make sure that we keep that in mind. Um, like I said, I think the key today is going to be the, the triple Q or the NASDAQ just because that will, uh, that that's kind of what led the market yesterday. And that's what I'll be looking for today. But let's go ahead and take a peek real quick. Apple continuing to break out. Uh, let's go ahead and go to our flex. We can see the pre-market. So Apple's balancing higher, still around the highs. AMD is kind of just chilling, not doing much. Amazon above that 140 level. Google finally trying to break out, right? They finally had that breakout yesterday. This is something that we were looking for, Google to start participating in the rally. 
in order for the market to continue. Trin, good morning. Ace, good morning. Javier, good morning. You know, so that, that would be something that would uh, kind of help the market if Google starts to participate. The upside, Meta had a big day yesterday, but is pulling back a little bit here in the pre-market. Microsoft is trying to uh, just hold its upside from yesterday. Netflix actually opened up on a gap today, so it's actually opening up above yesterday's high, or close to it at least. And then uh, Tesla is doing the same. Um, and then the VIX is actually, it's up right now about 0.91, but down overall, sitting down at about 22.1. Um, you can see I changed the, the screen just a little bit, right? I moved our weighted AD right here just so it's a little bit bigger and easier for everyone to see. You can still see the weighted line. You can still see the unweighted line back there. I could even make the unweighted line a little bit easier to see. Um, Non-weighted code, we can just make it, uh, make it red. Yeah. We'll make it yellow. Okay. That doesn't really help at all. We can kind of see it though, so we'll be all right. Uh, this is just cumulative tick, so it's going to get let us know about upticks versus downticks and just cumulative a little bit, right? This is also from Shadow Trader. Reyes, good morning. Jason, good morning. So that'll just be something that we uh, have to adjust to. I changed the um, the vold back to bars, right? I saw Peter had it like that. He put out a video yesterday I was watching, and um, I kind of liked how it looked, so I was just like, well... I'll uh, that looks nice. I think I'll do the same. Um, let me pull up some Reveille real quick. Oops. And we'll get this day going. Thomas, good morning. Uh, Peter put out a vid, yeah, to the members yesterday. Yeah. All right, we're ready. Let's go. We've got about one minute left until the market opens. Everyone get ready. We're going to be opening up inside yesterday's value. Looks like we're going to be opening up really close to these single prints. So we'll be looking for this low of Globex to hold, right? It's right at the top of balance. We'll be looking for that to hold and uh, see if these buyers are willing to initiate at these higher prices. Triple Q looks like it's turning down here a little bit early on in the session. Remember that high of yesterday was 70. Uh, what was it? It was like, what was this? It was, yeah, 70 ish. LFG. Here we go. Five seconds. Good morning, Red. Good morning, Kevin. All right, we open up pretty much right on yesterday's settle. Initial auction is to the downside here. Back up above the open. 
remember overnight inventory is pretty mixed here so it didn't get back down to that blowbacks low yet or the blowbacks point of control excuse me back to the open you sell see these sellers trying to mechanically sell here off of the open they're selling right above the open here Triple Q's trading down here. I'm selling, trying to come in. Back and forth across the open. So remember inside, when we open up inside value, typically we get a fairly choppy market to start the day. So this is where you want to just be patient, right? Because we know we're looking for these single prints to act as support. And if, uh, you know, if they don't close down into there, there's good odds that we can trade up higher. We're looking that first test to be that 70. Um, but really, I'm just kind of waiting to see if they're going to try to push it back down to these single prints and watch us see the order flow that comes in if these shorts start to cover down here. See, the breadth is pretty pretty mixed. Two to one on the NASDAQ, one to one pretty much on the NYSE. But nothing really too crazy there. Triple Q is still coming down here off of the open. So that's a, our tech sector is starting to sell off a little bit. Now we've got a weak spot on the profile above. A little bit of liquidation there. Um, basically from about 54 quarter to about 53. Peter, thank you for the like. On Facebook. You do have a fairly big bid sitting on the 50, right? That's kind of that low of balance, that 50 to 47. So we're looking for these shorts to start covering. So right here, looking to get into a long. And my stop's going to go right below that Globex low. That's going to be a structured stop, right? So you're looking at 48 is your stop. Entry is 51.50. And so you're you're looking at about a three point risk. You're going to be targeting this prior day high. Triple Q starting to turn around a little bit. Let's see if Triple Q can get above. You can see this pink line right here, and I can even um, make it a little bit bigger so it stands out a bit more. That's that resistance from the very top right that's that resistance that's been acting since the, pretty much the beginning of the year here we're looking to see buyers step up and start buying above the open here and haven't seen it yet sellers are still kind of backfilling this area so no real strength from the buyers here and this is not one of those times where we just you know we play start stop initially and we're just going to you know sit here and wait for it to get hit Right. If we got into profit, you know, you want to take it off because it's early on in the session. And we know that early on in the session inside the previous day's value is probably going to be a bit choppy. Sellers offering that 52 quarter here. Pretty much back at the entry. Big bid still sitting on the 50. That looks like it wants to trade, honestly, that 50, 254 lots, 260 lots. Let's see if they're going to get down there and get it. They got it. Netflix kind of broke out to the upside here. They closed those single prints. They don't break that Globex low yet. That's pretty weak right there. And look at the reaction or the responsive buying right there off of that low. The offer was still sitting on that 52 quarter here. Got five contracts straight on that very low tick right there.
where it starts to cover down there they get a little bit nervous you see we pop above that 5250 where these sellers were offering we got weak spots on the profile right there 52 or uh, yeah, 52 52 quarter target for these buyers like i said is going to be up at yesterday's high once they if they were able to crack the open i want to say once they because you know we don't know for sure but that's what we're looking for So offer still coming down here. Buyer's not really that strong. But if these sellers can't get back down below that 52, they're going to start to get nervous, and you'll start to see a little bit of short covering back up to the open where they'll try to offer again. And there is an offer sitting like basically right above the open. Netflix is breaking out to the upside here. A little backing and filling from sellers. It looks like a little bit of strength here. I can see volume moving down back into these single prints, but nothing really confirmed, right? We're watching this balance area. You have to look for acceptance inside the balance uh, or acceptance above with some volume. So volume coming in off of the low, still above that 53. See if they try to offer this settle again. Or the open, I mean, excuse me. Open and settle are basically at the same level. You said AMD is starting to drop a bit. Yeah, they turned it right around. They came, they're coming up to a resistance as well, AMD is. Yeah, Apple's trying to go up here. Amazon had a big pop on the early session, but is now coming back down to reality. Google still within its range from yesterday at the highs, right? Google would be a big one if it starts to break out. That would kind of confirm um, some upside. I think Google needs to participate in the upside if this thing wants to keep going. Meta's up about 1%, breaking its high from yesterday as well. You can see the NASDAQ breath starting to climb. NYSE breath is kind of flipped red. Netflix is on a tear right here. Coinbase looks like it's halted. I think it is. Meta's trying to break out still. Triple Q just flipped back underneath of its open. So this is going to be the one that we'll watch today. For the most part, I think this is going to be the signaler. Starting to come back down below that low here. Or trying to get back down below that low. Still not able to take it. What would happen here? Nasdaq Brett's cooling off pretty quick here. It was 2.8, now it's 2.3. There goes that low. Well, basically the same low. One one tick right there. You're starting to see some some uh, volume form below that low. Some bids start to stack up below that low, which could be an indication that you might get a liquidation here. These sellers are, or these buyers from yesterday are, are itching out. AD is a little heavy. Yeah, and you can see the sectors here are pretty red for the most part. The thing is, the thing that's kind of holding me off of, of anything right now is just that the tempo is so slow to the downside, and every time it upticks, it almost comes back to the open. So it looks like the, the selling is a little bit mechanical, but selling is still kind of beating out the, uh, the uh, buying so far. There's a peak back into this balance from yesterday. If the market gets accepted back in this lower balance, you'd really be looking for it to trade down to that 41.20. That's kind of where I'll be looking for it to see if it wants to go. I 
What's this over here? Oh, no. So a peak below the Globex low. That opens the can basically for the downside. But we see, look at look at the response every time off of the low. So we've seen sellers move down from the open. They move down around that 52, that, that last trade. It just seems like the selling is a bit mechanical. Um, you know, but no way really to uh, confirm it. And we still have a, a weak-ish breath. The breath's picking up a little bit here. Trying to get back above the zero level. Look at this. Healthcare just flipped red. Consumer discretionary green. Staples green. Utilities green. But other than that, everything is pretty much red. You're starting to see some some uh, negative ticks on the weighted AD as well. Bot got into a call. Yeah, I mean, there's just... Your holds are not going well? Yeah. Yeah, my Tesla puts didn't go well either. A little $800 mistake. And then I didn't sell yesterday like a fucking degen. And I'll just hold them till expiry tomorrow. So maybe the market will crash tomorrow and they'll gain a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, positivity. See, and this is what makes me think this selling is mechanical, right? Look how far back we've retraced. So let's see if sellers look to fill this in here. If sellers are able to hold us below the open one more time, then then I might be, you know, considering some strength. But other than that, it just looks mechanical. What's this high volume is like 63 from yesterday right here. This other high volume nodule. Same thing in the overnight session too, so. You can see a lot of, a lot of absorption up here above the open. From sellers. And it looks, the book looks really thin today on both sides. Um, to be honest. Weak spot on the profile below is at 51.75 now. Buyers need to step up in order to take this thing higher here. There's a small offer sitting on the 58 that's holding this market down. If that moves up the 58, there it goes. That level up is at 63. That's kind of where that high volume was at earlier. Triple Q is trying to go for that resistance. Let's see if it gets up there. Not really a ton of volume above. There it goes. So look, there's the bid right there. We just found the buyer. Buyer stepped up right here on the 57 half. So here he is. Let's see if he stays. Still going. See, and these buyers step up. Good morning. Got a call from Marine Reserve. Might be a call up. Oh, dang, Martin. Where at? 
or are they uh back to like San Diego or will you be on the the East Coast? So watch this 57, right? We identified where that buyer was at. He's right here on this 57 half. Let's see if he keeps holding this level. Look at the breath starting to pick up here. Weighted sector starting to pick up. Information technology, financials, consumer discretionary communications, and industrials all flip to green here. The NYSE breath is still kind of weak. Oil's below 90 now. Thin spots 59 quarter and 58.50. So that buyer on the 57 still confirms he's still down there buying right above the open. So it could be a mechanical buyer too. So we've got to be careful about that. But it does look like we've, we should be good for this 63 here. And 63 was that area where they got a little bit of response overnight. You see a little bit of the volume and then the volume from yesterday right there on that 63. Let's see if they get an offer here. So sellers trying to absorb here, but they're just not doing a great job here. It looks like they're just kind of going to get trapped. Still need to get above that 63 here. Um, you can see they're kind of trying to, to sell that same spot that they tried to sell yesterday. And if you look here, right, uh, one thing that we want to note, we look at the profile from yesterday. Let's just make this big so we can see everything. Um, you know, this M period did give a little bit of a spike look before liquidating before so really it it looks like shorts got trapped here and then they covered here right on that on that move up they they covered but no buying showed up right at the end of the day and that's why all these short-term momentum longs ended up closing their positions going into the close and we settled you know pretty much back down but in this upper distribution right so we've got a lower distribution down here upper distribution up here separated by single prints come back down we checked below even right i was you know waiting for you know I, I really would like it of us to held this position but you know a couple ticks down below isn't going to kill us um no volume came in 55 contracts traded on that low we quickly retraced just like every time right and that's why key a, a key thing is that tempo and volume um morning nelson morning crypto mojo that don't know Talk is about China was planning on taking your course. Have TPO on my platform, but have questions. Yeah, Martin, just hit me up if you have any questions, man. Back down to that 57. Let's see if this buyer is still here willing to buy this thing up. Let's 
Oops, let me get this back to half screen. So if you did take the long from that low, right? If you if you got stopped out but got back in like I did, um, you know, right now if we're talking about structured stops, I know you guys wanted to talk about um, structured stops today. Pop, good morning, right? We hide our stop right behind this Globex point of control, right? That's so that's what I mean when I talk about my structured stops. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean if we trade below where we know the buyer's at 57, that I'm just going to, you know, hold on for dear life. If I'm in profit, I'm not going to let this thing retrace all the way back down to me. Um, on the initial move, I got long at that 51.50. We popped up a little bit, weren't able to get back over the open. I closed most of it, but I did hold one lot till that Globex low. It ticked me out. I re-entered on that 51.50 once we retraced. Um, I actually closed one on 62 quarter. Luckily, there was some actual trades on that very top tick. Um, and I, I just clicked the uh, clicked the little thing down or whatever it's called, the, the bracket. Um, and I now have one lot within, uh, with the entry still 51 half. But if we get, you know, too much below this 57 with some tempo and, and some volume starts to form down there, then I, I'm going to, you know, give it up. There's no, no reason to hold on to it just to try to wait for it to get to your spot, right? It's not it, it's not a bet that you can't adjust, right? It's not like uh like imagine if we're playing blackjack, right? And this is this is a good way to think about it. And I actually need to write this down. Imagine if we're playing blackjack and I deal you your cards. This one's an ace, and I deal my card, and my card's a ten. Okay, and now I let you decide and you bet, let's say you bet a hundred. And now you decide, okay, uh, I, I say, hey, do you want to take half of this back before we deal the next card? Or do you want to double it, right? Imagine if you were able to place bets as every card co comes out, right? Remember, the dealer's next card is face down. Your next f card is face up, but your next card comes out, and it's a two, right? But you stayed with the 100. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it riding, right? We just got below the 57. Watch for volume and tempo to pick up. Didn't get a ton of volume above. We'll kind of see what's happening here. Back to that Globex point of control. And so now what do you do, right? I have a 10 showing. You don't see it to see my whole card. You have an ace and a two, right? So you're looking at a 13. What do you want to do? You want to cut, you want to cut your trade? I'll let you take your hands, your, your hundred back, but you can only take back uh, 25 of it. So now you got to, you got to, or 75 of it. You got to leave 25 on the table till the cards flip. Right, it's the same idea. Uh, we're we're playing these odds, but you don't get to you. You actually get the opportunity here to decide. Okay, is this what I'm gonna do? Uh, is this? Am I gonna just keep holding? You know, something like that. So you know. And the reason I'm talking about this is because that's how I do place my stops. My I place structured stops, right? And I was talking about my stop being below that Globex point of control. But if we got too much below that 57 with some steam, I don't want to sit there and wait for that, right? I'd rather just cut it up here. And then if we come down to this Globex point of control and start to hold, kind of like we are now, then maybe I get in another long and start targeting that 63 again since we didn't get up to it on the first go. Right, we know we're inside value and we kind of expect the day to be a little bit choppy. And as the market's coming down, these shorts are taking that opportunity to cover. And we can kind of just assume that that's what's happening based off of how far these retracements are going up, right? Based off of how much tempo gets going on the upside. 5150 grade album. Market has been blessing me, up, blessing up lately. Yeah, it has. Van Halen. Yeah, Van Halen. Yeah. Be an offer moving down on the sixty here, two hundred and thirty-three lots, and then another one Are moving down on the fifty-nine. More than done. I'm looking to grab some QQQ puts if we reject that three twenty-seven. Yeah, I'm. You can see, I mean, it came right up to our resistance level. And this resistance, we, we talked about this early on. 
um you look on the daily you know it's really just you know been a resistance all the way from last year right this is 12 28 20 21 here we can see the triple q just been getting kind of rejected off this resistance so it makes sense to to um you know possibly see a bit more of that today or at least see some some possible stalling up here of price before it gets going unless some of these other sectors right energy really wasn't on board yesterday uh and that's kind of what that's another sector that we'll be looking for that i'm looking for to start to really jump on board but i can see it's not a uh, big big thing is oil right just became below 90 so oil got rejected off of uh upper uh channel let's just go to this chart um or this uh rejected off of a previous uh support so came down below it and kind of rejected below it so not really uh not really showing a bunch of strength and that's you know another reason why the dow is actually negative right now gold is actually up a full percent almost breaching that 1800 again So there's a lot of you know conflicting uh you know information today or conflicting indices today that are in order to get this continuation this you know big continuation that we've all been waiting for to get that previous month's high that 7675 we need to see some participation from some of these sectors that have been lagging all right So offer still sitting on the 60 here. See if these buyers are willing to lift it up. A little scared. Yeah, it, it does it does possibly look like a late day break. And then something, you know, something that I was talking about if you guys are tuning in a, a little bit late. Um, typically balance areas will start to form or when they do start to overlap with each other, that can mean that the market or the, ch the current trend is getting a, a bit stale, right? And so when we take a peek at this, um, we saw balance, another balance, another balance, um, Right? So these are overlapping balances to the low side, kind of telling us that maybe the downside was getting a little bit overdone. Um, and that's what you know turned us kind of you know bullish, uh, if you if you like that word, right? And something that we had talked about in the stream is how we thought sellers are going to get trapped on this 50 day SMA, and they did, right? And so we balanced, right? Trap sellers on a look below and fail came in imbalance, we've balanced higher, now we're breaking out of balance. So if the market starts to balance up here and doesn't get a clean breakout, right? And I'd really like to see that breakout up to this 3330, and I'll show you why, because that's where this week high is still at, this at uh, 43.035. That's really where I'd like to see uh, the market try to push up to. You have that 200 SMA, 43 quarter, uh, 43.25, if the market does start to balance and doesn't break out, that's going to be telling us we're going to have overlapping balance areas maybe up here. Maybe we do get a little break to 4,200, really psychological level, and they want to push it. But that could tell us that this upside is getting a little bit stale, and the market may need to pull back. And this 4050 looks ripe for a pullback level if the market wants to continue the upside. Maybe a pullback down to this 4050, gain some steam, and then... And then head up from there if it wants to uh, continue, right? We're only going to trade the chart in front of us. We're not trying to predict the future or anything here. But, you know, that's just uh, my two cents. Here comes B period. Opening up right on the settle. So really a fairly balanced market, right? Market is really indecisive up here at these levels. Hasn't really made a decision on if it's uh if it's liking the upside or liking the downside yet but you know no follow through on on either side really spy and es have been moving funky yeah we have got some weird some weird moves especially the weird daily moves that's for sure 
Looks like one of these late day breaks. Yeah, definitely could be. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Back down below the open here. So remember what we talk about when the next period is inside the previous period, the market's balancing and doesn't really have the information that it wants. Uh, there is no real economic data coming out until uh, 12. We have Fed Mester on today at noon. Double R, what's up, man? Um, but until then, there's really no significant information. We had the jobless reports this morning. We had uh, the trade balance this morning. Mostly a wash, if you ask me. I didn't really see any movement off of it. Um, and the market really just trying to get accepted above this balance area. It's kind of, you know, this is the the auction, right? Imagine if, you know, TVs, we're, we're used to buying TVs for 500 bucks, and now they're 1000 bucks, right? Are people willing to buy them for a thousand bucks now? And if they are, and there's enough demand for people to start buying TVs at a thousand bucks, then we'll raise them to two thousand, right? But if not, we're gonna have to lower them. Are we gonna have to lower them back down to five hundred? You know, I don't know. That'll depend on the the market itself. But that that's kind of the key thing here is if you're looking at these, uh, if you're thinking about the auction, that's kind of how you should be thinking about it. I like to think of it as computer monitors, right? Because everyone for the most part, is looking at a computer monitor right now, uh, unless you're on your phone. Um, and speaking of that, if you're just joining us for the first time on YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook, go ahead and comment in the chat if you want to join the Discord. Only thing that we ask is you be positive and respectful. You know, we've got a community and we're not trying to get a bunch of trolls in here. You guys have all heard this before. You know, I feel like I should probably write it down so I could get a little script going. Um, but yeah, you know, so, so we are pretty much uh, just kind of looking for that acceptance, looking to see if, you know, people are going to buy this, uh, this peanut butter for 350 or whatever you want, right? Whatever your favorite thing is, think about it. Think about how much it costs and think about what the difference is. You know, think about energy drinks, right? Who drinks energy drinks in here? Let me get like a one in the chat. If you drink an energy drink, um, I don't know if you guys have Red Bulls over there in, in Europe. Um, I know you guys just drink tea when you need some fucking energy, so you don't need a you guys don't need the caffeine like us Americans do. But you know, uh let's talk about Red Bulls for a second. When you go to the store and you see a Red Bull and it's 350, you're like, "Nah, fuck that." But then you see when it's 2 for 5, you're like, "Oh shit, deal. I'll get some." Right? And that's kind of the thing. Is 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 this a is this a 2 for 5 here? Or is this a 350 area and buyers are like, nah, I'll wait, I'll wait for that two for five, right? And that's kind of how, how an auction works, right? And that's what we're looking for. Are these prices going to be accepted up here at these higher prices? Because remember when Red Bulls first came out, they weren't that expensive. If you guys remember, I, I used to get red lines back in the day, the real, you know, it's like, it was like uh, meth basically, um, which I don't recommend. Um, I drank one before a hockey game and almost had my heart explode. But you know, your they used to be like a dollar, right? Or remember those five hours? Our... <laughs> they call those RBVs. That's robot water. Turns you into a robot. You get drunk and energized at the same time. Hey, hey. So, dude, speaking of auctions, that I put these, uh, had these uh, vintage Bose uh, 601 speakers. I actually bought new back in 86. I'm trying to downsize. I put them in there for 300 bucks. And uh, I got these two guys going back and forth. I ended up getting 1,200 bucks for them. Perfect. Get these guys go back and forth. auction each other. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, see, and that's the thing is like, you know, you, when, you, when you think about it, it's, it's all in the, the eye of the beholder. Um, 
it, it, it very it, like it, it's really dependent upon what's going on right now. And, and when you think about it, like that's what I want you to try to think about is think about something that you buy quite often. Right. Whether it's peanut butter, cereal, coffee, tea, right. In the brand that you like when you go to the store and it's not on sale, do you buy it still? Or do you say, nah, I'm not, I'm good. Right. What do you, what do you do with that? Trying to get back up above this 63 here. We just almost tagged it. I've tried the reins. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite energy drink, I would say is you know is probably um what the fuck just happened here oh my I like god silver monsters i got fucking back ticked piece of shit motherfucker um my favorite energy drink actually is probably these celsius is to be honest with you um i am a big fan of bangs but the celsius is it's pretty good i don't get any it, it's like just enough you know what i mean do you, do you remember Jolts? Jolts, yeah. Uh, just been illegal. That was the last energy drink you ever had. That uh, <laughs> that lemon, yeah, that one, those are crazy. Let's see, Nelson. Brad, I have a question. I have yet to figure out why do P profiles increase the probabilities for a down move. So, uh, and you have to think of this in context, right? So. Typically, when we see a P profile at, at the top of an up move, doesn't really signify anything, right? But if we see a P profile, let's say if we're here, um, and let's just change this to a 30 minute and we'll give us some more days so we can really look back. Um, here, let's, let's do this because I don't want to take this off. Um, Here, let's look at the profile. Okay. Ah. Uh, oops. Go. Let's look at the ES. So once this thing loads, it might take a second to load because it's you know it's having some aids right now. Um. Okay. So let me increase the days here. It's days in us. Okay, so we're seeing some TPOs here, right? Very, uh, very, um, you know, different looking maybe. But so when we're on this downtrend here, right? And we see a P profile, you can see a P profile here. You can see a P profile here. You see another P profile and then, then you see a balanced profile, right? And so what these are signifying, right? this you've got a p here you've got this p here and this is at the the end or the lower push off of a down move so this is telling us that most of the buying in these two days is short covering right and so it's telling you not to get your hopes up um and then it's kind of the same the same thing in an up move right or the the opposite thing uh, and these are on four tick profiles just so you know but I mean, this was kind of this key. So this is that recent balance area that we just broke out of, right? And we see this lowercase b profile, but we're in an uptrend, right? So lowercase b profile tells us that this selling is mostly just liquidation from weak money. And so what are the odds that we come back up? The odds are good. And so if we see a profile at the top of an up move, that's a P shape, there's really no significance to it. Um, it, I mean, it could be short covering, but there's really no way to know because we don't know where everyone's short at, right? Cause where, where is everyone short at? Maybe they're short in this balance area and this thing just forms a P, but we saw more shorts get trapped yesterday and we didn't get a liquidation break and we haven't got a liquidation break yet. And we're just inside yesterday's balance. So we're just balancing higher for the most part today with no real follow through yet. Um, you know, and so that's why that's how you kind of have to look at the context of those b's and p's i know it's easy to just to kind of search around and find those uh profiles all over the place and you're like oh that was liquidation that means tomorrow blah 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 right that's just not necessarily uh not not really the best way to look at it okay 
taking some supplements to flush your adrenal glands. I haven't gotten good sleep in like a year. Damn. I got some supplements that will help that. Called THC. Josta? I never had Josta. Or, yeah, I never had Rowdy either. NASCAR driver Kyle Busch brand. I never met it as some yet got pocket before. Yeah, me neither. The side effects. It's pronounced Josta. Josta. It was a drink in the 90s. Oh, that was like when I was like uh, you know, three years old. Slowly roll. <laughs> you guys remember Four Locos, original Four Locos? Talk about energy. They call it, you drink a, a Four Locos and a, and a 40. We called it, where I'm from, we called it the Sidewalk Slammer. Because that show get you so fucked up, you'd fall and slam into the sidewalk. Is that a ca California thing? Must be. <laughs> Back down to the VWAP here. VWAP sitting at 154. Yep, high school days, yeah. Dan, when were you born? You're probably born near near where I'm born. That was that was high school. Go back down doing this little dance below the open where you got one tick above that A high and you know a possible uh show of weakness up here, right at that sixty-three. I still think it's that's just where these sellers are trying to to be, you know, kind of where they were at. Oh, you're born ninety five, Dan. Oh, yeah, I'm eighty eight, so I'm a little bit older than you. But yeah, same same uh, time frame. Why right, take Warden's ball away from him and put it back on the fridge? Are you going outside? Oh, I'll take his ball. the best year to be born there's a triple q at so you can see the nasdaq didn't take that that previous high here Said the 15 minute candles on the spy and triple Q are about to confirm your short bias. Let's see what you're looking at. 15 minutes. You got a bias? <laughs> yeah, biases are a dangerous thing here. Okay, take them out. Oh, smart. He doesn't have to go to the bathroom. He just wants someone to take him outside. Are you looking... So if this closes with this excess, that will confirm your downside? All right, see, so confirmation, at least, you know, you'd need to get it back below this 322. So at least have a, a, a break of the one time framing up on that 15 minute. But I'm a little bit more patient here. Coming back down towards those single prints. I'm just going to leave. Well, actually, no, we could, could get rid of these single prints. They're just kind of annoying me. Nope, got rid of the last. Whoops. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, What have you been recommended for draining the adrenal glands? Oh, you're asking somebody else. Yeah. I was going to recommend THC. That's all I was going to recommend. You can see some... Let's get rid of that. Um, you can see the, the the flip here, right? It's getting kind of weak. The breath is green still. NASDAQ breath has cooled off. We were up more close to three. We're at two and a half. Now we're back down to two. Information technology really just kind of back and forth. Uh, you know, if we take a peek around, you can see... Oh, what the fuck's here? 
you can see Apple back down below it's open see AMD is just gassing for some reason who knows Amazon is coming back down to its open Google is down coming down back down to its open Meta is basically flat coming back down to its open Microsoft basically flat right coming back down to its open Netflix even pulled back after that huge bounce over the 230 wasn't able to hold it you can see the triple Q overall is just coming back down to its open um, Tesla is down below its open as well mechanical buying off that below you recommend THC for everything I mean it's natural yeah And our bodies have receptors that are specifically for THC. Um, I like uh, I I like gummies the the most. To be honest with you, um, you know I like a good uh, a good spliff every now and then. But um, I think gummies, I I, I like gummies the best. But I'm a champion when it comes to gummies too. So not a lot of people are champions. What's that? Look, has tobacco in it, though, right? Oh well, yeah, it's like wrapped. I like wrap it in tobacco. A little push down here. Let's see if B is going to take that A low. Getting back down to that glow back actually... slow here. The tempo is starting to pick up a little bit. We're not getting really big retracement, so if volume starts to come in. We'll be looking for a bit more downside here. Arsenic. Yeah, it says fluoride. But um, splits are actually um, illegal in Amsterdam, believe it or not. Oh, they especially they... train their cops to smell them. That's crazy. I was a, yeah, I was a judge in the uh, 2012 Canvas Cup. And uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Because you can do everything there, but you don't do splits. I only take, um, yeah, ingesting it as a constant, yeah, more constant. Every time you try gummies, they make you sick. You, you got to get, if you're going to get gummies, you got to get them from like a, a reputable shop. You know, you can't just get them from your local neighborhood pharmacist because they don't know how to dose things right. Yeah, see the brownies too. Yeah, I mean that's like they're not dosed right. They're they're unless you get them from like a shop, like a medical shop. Yeah, I won't. I and they're also delayed, so you know, what I mean, they're, they're delayed. So sometimes take more. You know, wait. Yeah, and I I won't mess around with the homemade shit either because I've been I've got sick off homemade shit before. And it's the worst. Just ruins it. You know, you're just like, oh god damn it. Well, the sugar's worse for you than the THC. You're shooting, you're shorting the corn. Oh, yeah, it's on a big gap down. I haven't even been watching this. All the way up to 825. Oh, I should have just held that thing forever. Yeah, see, I mean, I sure it's, still, it's still got a gap below corn does. That's kind of a, that's a tough, that's a tough short there. Right down in support too. We want to see either acceptance, and really it's got to get down, stay below this 47. That's that high of balance. But we need to see either acceptance or rejection at this level. And, and really, you know, not getting, not getting really any information here um, from, uh, from the market, to be honest. Yeah, I only take a couple 
<laughs> Bitcoin. Oh, Bitcoin. <laughs> My bad. My bad. <laughs> Um, I only take a couple supplements, um, and mainly it's, uh, I take like an herbal supplement, which has like green tea and that ashwagandha shit in it. Um, and, um, what's that other shit called? Uh, turmeric. And then I take uh milk thistle. Those are the only two supplements I take. How many supplements are almost all junk? Like, you never know what you're getting. Yeah, for the most part. So, weak spot on the profile up here is above is that 4150. But it looks like we had short covering on this 4146-ish area. So, let's see if these sellers can move it back down there. And that'll kind of confirm that they want to get a little bit more selling. Without that ability to get back below that 146... Or 145.50 or 41.45.50. Um, you know, it just looks like like these uh looks like it's just short covering the volume that's coming in down here. Now we're back into that Globex range. Does Ashwagandha help with anything? It's like a you know, it's supposed to give you like energy, right? Natural energy. Um I don't know, it's in, so like, in, uh, I take like an herbal, like a hippie supplement. I got a family full of hippies. Um, it's weird by ashwagandha. Yeah, it's organic ashwagandha extract. And then it has elo through extract, then L-theine, which is amino acid, and then green tea extract. I just take one every morning. It says the suggested dose dose is uh, four capsules per day, but I just take one every morning because I'm in charge of myself. So I can suggest all they want. Oh well, post session lows. Spy waked way lower, but triple Q swept its overnight lows. That triple Q that or that well I guess this is that yeah this is that settlement low. And of course it's not health advice, it's entertainment. Right. Yeah. I'm just telling you what I take. Not rec no no recommendations here. Straight plant? If you eat just straight bud, like you're just a savage. I do, Thomas. Yeah, I feel, well, I mean, it's just in the supplement that I take and I feel like, uh, I feel like that I don't get, uh, bloated as much. Right. And I don't have as much joint, um, inflammation, right. Because that's a big issue for me. That's, that's what causes a lot of the problems in my back is that inflammation. Uh, and so, these things like combined for me since I've started taking it one gives me that natural energy and then two kind of just helps me not feel like as tense all the time <laughs> I torch my own cash don't torch it for me what do you take from the volt hanging around zero not much strength yeah exactly Tommy we're just not getting no conviction yet right so like nobody's deciding okay let me let me get up. Let me let me get down. You can see we're down from yesterday, but in, in the weighted sectors is kind of the same idea, right? No no real conviction from either side. And even the Nasdaq breath is cooling off, and so for me, it, it kind of is telling us that we're not finding the buyers that we need up here to get continuation. But also, we haven't seen a reaction from a responsive seller and other time frame seller either. Right. And I mean, honestly, th this thing could really come all the way back down to here. This 4112 would still be inside yesterday's range and then come back up at the close or back up later in the session and still be in there um, and still be available to to uh, 
to trade higher, right? Um, let me look at the volume real quick. But yeah, I'm kind of waiting to see if we're going to get acceptance up here or, or below this 47 is kind of the big level. You're on face on the board. Oh, no, I want something to show me. Gordon. The dog just picking on the kids. Look at all the volume coming in right here at that low or the high of previous balance. And this is kind of what we saw yesterday. You remember the 4120, it, it had a similar feel. Kathy Woods is saying we're in an inventory in session, a recession. Yeah, she's, I mean, I don't know. She, she's just like, she's a psycho. So. Burnt parts of food can apparently worsen inflation, toast, barbecue, crisp, pork cracklings, you know, all the best bits. Yeah. And I don't, and uh, one thing I've definitely cut out of my diet a ton that's helped is salt, right? And I, not cut out, but I'm very aware of how much sodium I'm uh, consuming. And that's helped a ton with, uh, with some of those issues. Yeah, you know, I, I cut out salt. When you cut out salt, it's, it's amazing how you can taste it later, like, you know, later, like, you taste it, it's crazy. Like, you know, you taste it before and then you cut it out and taste it and everything, because you put shit in it and everything. Right. And, and since we've, because we've been staying with my in-laws, my father-in-law has been cooking uh, dinner pretty much every night and he has high blood pressure. So he's really got to watch his salt intake. And so he's not been salting like the steaks and the pork chops and the chicken as much as like I would if I was cooking it. And, you know, it still tastes, still tastes great. Um, you know, but it, it, like I, I can feel the difference. What? I don't care. Try cutting out red meat. You bitch. No, oh, fuck no, never. I'll never do that. Yeah, I got one of those salt uh, crushers. It's like the pink Himalayan salt, and you like twist it. And it's like, <laughs> but you know, I'm just like, ooh, I'm like fucking salt bay in there, just twisting salt everywhere. You cut out everything except meat and eggs, but you have loads of salt. Pretty much I eat eggs for breakfast every single day. Two eggs and a piece of toast. And a banana. Some days, it depends how like heavy my workout was in the morning, if I take that banana in or not. Because bananas have a lot of sugar, and you're not really trying to get a bunch of sugar unless it's unless you work out, right? If you, if you work out, banana is good for you because sugar is good for your muscles. One of uh, one of the people I follow, and I really I really think he's one of the smarter people when it comes to exercise fitness, is that Jim Stepani, um, and he is big on eating gummy bears after a workout. The triple Q is breaking lower here. You can see the breath is really starting to turn red. Information technology, healthcare, financials, consumer discretionary, all turn red. Energy starting to pick up on the low side. We just have to see if they're going to get some continuation here. Are these sellers really about that life? I don't mind. As long as Anthony says it's okay. Right. But I'm not walking you guys down. Okay. Okay. C period opens up. Let's see what they do. 
Then some in Phoenix, I'm gonna uh, triple Q breaks the low. Killed. What's that, Kevin? I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a new dog because mine was killed a few weeks ago, and it is crazy how many people are getting rid of their dogs right now because I've been evicted. Yeah, yeah, and you can't. A lot of a lot of rental places won't take them in. Injecting testosterone is good for your muscles. Yeah, that's true, actually. I don't. I mean, I'm not a. I'm not against um, testosterone supplements. As long as they're done like properly, you know what I mean. Like it, it, anything can be done in the right way or the wrong way. You know, like Ricky Gervais. You know, just one heroin, please. This is your female. <laughs> So a peak below the B low. Watch this 5150 up here. That's where the volume came in, or that's where that offer was in before. So offer still trying to move down here, but it doesn't look like they're really making any progression. So watch the 51 half to see if they cover back up to that. And that's where the offer looks like it's been kind of sitting uh, so far where there's there's some actual decent volume. Oh, I hold that. Big offer coming down. 47 has 347 lots. It gets covered and it bounces right up. So watch this 47. 47, like we talked about, it's going to be a big level today. It's that high of balance. And that's kind of the turning point right there. That was a big trade. 4750, 130 lots traded on the ask. Good for the muscle, bad for the hairline. <laughs> and that lot's still there on the 47 half. 300 lots, 200 lots right above it, 300 lots right above it. Ton of lots right here just traded. 281 lots on the 47 half again traded on the ask. Hard to tell. You know, it's really hard to tell right now what's what's going to be the consensus. Look at that. 1,000 lots just showed up on the 45. Oh, my. We haven't seen a bid like that in a while. Getting really choppy. Yeah, we could get it. We could get a crazy move here. Definitely manage some risk here if you're trading, if you're in a trade. Too big. Oh, it traded. Damn, that thing traded. Holy shit. 1,200 lots came through on that 45 right there. One was 141 lots, 121 lots, 142 lots, and 117 lots. This could be another time frame seller trying to push this market down here, so be careful if you're in along. Like I said, today's well, not one of those me. days that you're going to want to be sitting in along, just kind of praying and hoping that it comes back. And that was a pretty, uh, that was a pretty big, uh, pretty big order. One of the bigger orders I've seen in, in a while, to be honest with you. But can you tell if it was traded or they just took the, the, the bid off? Oh, it traded. I saw it trade. See on this 45, how much volume came through right there? Is summer over yet? The dump a I mean, it looks like it. You just gotta, we just gotta see acceptance back down in here. We're coming back down to yesterday's half back, getting into this lower distribution, right? We weren't able to test the high of value yesterday, and we're still inside yesterday's value. So that target's gonna be that 132. But I think if they, you know, gain some tempo and continue this tempo, they're, they're gonna target that 4120 from yesterday. Things just 
getting thin on the way down here. Weighted sector starting to roll over here. Breath is flipped to red and starting to pick up. NASDAQ flipping to the same. What do you want me to do, Maya? Put him in the kitchen. Okay, lock him in the kitchen. You really need to trade against everything you learned in the last year. Looks like a little bit of short covering right there. Let's see if we get continuation. A little bit of a little bit of short covering down there. You want to see these sellers continue if they don't really fucking. As Peter say, if we trade two periods in the inside of value, usually we test the value area low. Yeah, he does. Hello. Maya, turn that fan back on. It was turned off. Yeah, uh, so shorts cover right here around this 38. Well, let's see if sellers going to come in and backfill this area. If we don't see sellers come in and backfill this area, really, you know, look where the volume's at. Look for these sellers to move down and offer up here. We should see some backfilling if these sellers are serious. We did see, you know, a huge order trade um, on the 45. Big, big order traded there. So if we get above the 45, you can assume that, you know, they're probably... These are probably where they are covering. Feels like it's still being a BTC short from yesterday's imbalance. Bag date hundred on the on the E oh bag date hundred easy, nice. In spot really is that 44 quarter. If we give up that 44 quarter, you might see a bit of short covering. But if, as long as these sellers keep holding it down here, we should be good for for uh, for downside, right? And that's right on the that T2 high. So that's a spot if you're short where we keep our stop right here. Even a little bit higher, 44 quarter is where I like to keep mine. Volume's still coming in. What's EOW options? End of week options? Or like weekly options, you mean? Weekly VWAPs down at the 41.26. And there's a bid, there's a bid a little bit lower here, or some bids starting to stack here around this 36. Hey Nora, how you feeling? So volume comes in at the low, but no, no follow through here yet from these sellers. Five on. Is 
Dang, nice. That's pretty good. So there's a little bit of follow through there. Let's see if we can keep getting this offer to move down. Buyers trying to buy up this 3875. I'm still giving my, my stop some space here. But my I might call it here because this is just it's slowing down so hard. I just yeah, just tough. I don't I don't want to cut my short too early, but I also don't want to just sit here forever and let myself get give up gains. Especially we're not seeing we're not seeing really like a huge press, right? The breath is still positive on the NASDAQ, barely negative on the NYSE. I'd like to see some more negative breath to get more continuation to the downside. Yeah, there we go. We're starting to get... Okay, a little offer there on the 4140. Let's see if they hold it. Taking the shit from the fuckers. Okay. Seller's still offering this 40. That's good news. See if they can hold it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, options are leveraged, you know, so there's definitely opportunity to be made there. But it can also go the other way. Remember that, right? You don't want to just think you can't lose and, uh, you know, just start going all crazy so whatever you're doing that's working hopefully you're documenting it and you know you'll be able to track it as you progress forward so they hold the 40 for now See if they're going to get some continuation i'll move my stop down to 41 now if we get above 41 i'll just close the short really tight on this one because it's just not you know it's just getting too slow for me to just keep sitting here All right. I'll be right back, guys. Get down, Nasdaq's pooping. Yeah, it's just not it's not following through. That's the only thing.
with 15 minutes until the next period opens up here. The selling just making me a little bit thinking that this selling down here might be shorts getting a little bit uh, overdone. And that could have just been a drop due to liquidation. This 41 is just kind of selling off the half back. What, what did Seinfeld say made of thirsty? It's making me thirsty. Can... What? Seinfeld, yeah, I can't remember. Something made him thirsty. It's making me thirsty. I can't remember what's up. Mm, I have to ask my dad. I don't what know if he's paying attention. Pretzels. Pretzels. There we go. That's right. Pretzels. Thanks, Roach. So let's take a little peek around here. Um, if anyone's still running the short, let me know so we can still keep reading the order flow. Google's down. Well, let's actually go back up to Apple. So Apple's down about 0.8, getting that back down below. Uh, AMD's starting to come back down, but really just hanging up on its highs. Amazon's actually still green, but just barely compared to yesterday's settle. Google on its way down, one time framing lower here. Meta, a big flip after that big pop. Microsoft, right, it's been looking weak lately and still looking weak. Netflix, after that big move to the upside, is now having a bigger move to the downside. Uh, Triple Q, right, is still hanging out below its low. And Tesla, barely green compared to yesterday because they opened up on a gap. But, you know, one time framing down basically since the opening session. Uh, pretty that's a pretty decent response off that low right and like i said i think a lot of these shorts were just selling off that half back and they may have gotten a little bit too short there right you know market's been going up and everybody wants it to go down and so a lot of times this is kind of what happens right the people get a little bit too short in the hole and and then you get some of this uh some of this uh you know retracement here on this move up Look for that 5150. I think that's probably going to be the target early on. That's where that offer was sitting at originally. We are seeing a little bit of selling right here at the at the half back of uh today's session right on that 4950. So that C high looks mechanical to me. Do you base your technical analysis solely off TPO charts or do you refer to candlesticks as well for entry and exit? Uh my entry and exit is all based off of the TPO. Yeah, but I do look at like a, a monthly, weekly, and daily chart every single day. But everything, yeah, all of my entries and things like that are based solely off of what I'm seeing in the market, based off of the order flow that's coming through on the TPO. I use my DOM for entry, uh, but it's not somewhere that I'm that I'm really, you know, focused on. It's more of like when we get to an area that I like to, that I, that I think that there's opportunity to take a trade, then I pull my DOM up, right? I try to hide it as much as possible because the DOM can really give you fake signals or false signals. Uh, honestly, if, um, you know, if you, if you, uh, you know, if you're just watching it all the time, you're, you're going to start to see patterns you're like, Oh, last time I saw this fucking thing popped. And it's like, well, the DOM doesn't have any context with it. And so if you lose sight of the context of, of what's going on, right, and the context is, you know, on a weekly chart, we're one time framing to the upside. On the daily chart, we're getting a breakout of balance. On a monthly chart, it looks like we're having a cessation of one time framing. So that's telling us that an other time frame trader has entered the market on the long side. And that's what, you know, probably is is causing some of these shorts down here 
we get a little bit what they call short in the hole right and that's why we had our stop at 41 because we knew above 41 probably get a bit of a retracement there and and you know not saying that i'm predicting the future or anything but these are just odds and probabilities based off of my experience and the past things that we've seen right just like this c high looks mechanical and i doubt that it's going to hold on the next test of it i think you know i think that 5150 was the area and you can see where that volume came in here's that 51 and i'm just saying 5150 so i'm not having to say two numbers but it's there's no exacts in the market and if you're if you're following a guru that is telling you oh you know it, it did exactly as i predicted right the fucking everybody gets lucky every once in a while and says the exact number right i've got lucky a bunch of times and and had the the exact number but if you're trying to focus on that exact number it's going to blind you to what's really going on in front of you in the actual context of the market right and the context of the market here is a breakout of balance and if we don't get accepted lower well then buyers are still like parties on motherfuckers time to go right so until we until we see that some conviction from sellers not just one period that trades down below the 47 level and doesn't stay you know it's hard to stay short and i'm not saying that there's not opportunity to be made on both sides naturally of course there is but you've got to just be you know kind of aware of what's going on contextually context is king and you know what they say time time in the market doesn't beat time on the market i think they say it back i think i said it backwards but it's time in the market, not timing the market. There you go. I'm in the market, not timing the market. Thank you, Kevin. So there's that 5150. It's an area where we saw sellers come out before, and it happens to be really close to the VWAP as well. VWAP sitting at like 4150. So let's see if they hold this level. This is a level where they would look to hold, and we're kind of getting close to that Globex point of control. Right, what would have confirmed the downside, right? When we got down here, even though there was a retracement, I still would have cut my short no matter what. But what would have confirmed is if we did a little bit of backing and filling and the market really just kind of stayed in here, built volume out, we saw volume move down, and then another test back down into here to see if sellers are willing to sell this lower price. But that's not what we saw, right? We saw them just trade right through it. So no sellers move down in this area. Sellers are waiting patiently, selling this 51 half ish. You can see the weighted AD is trying to tick up a little bit, coming back to life. Seller's trying to get heavy on this 50 here. They need to get below it. You know, and if you're if you're struggling to understand the TPO and you and you haven't read Jim Dalton's books, right? Do yourself a favor, and 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 do it. You know, it's a long. I mean, he's got a couple books. One of them's long. One of them's not as long. But just read the fucking books. You know what I mean? I read books like almost constantly. We go to the pool. Guess what? I'm sitting on the edge of the pool just reading a book. I'm always trying to improve myself and that's the thing is this is it's not something that you're just gonna understand by just staring at it over and over right you want to i mean really that's how you're going to start to to grasp what's going on but if you haven't really read his books and, and get the basics down and that's why i always like to refer back to jim's books because they're very basic they are the basics of the the profile and they explain it so well that you know if you're not if you're not reading them you're, you're doing yourself a disservice 
right? So you've got to force yourself if you hate reading, you know, do, you know, that's, that's the, that's the, the sacrifice. You know what I mean? I hate running. I fucking hate it, right? Hate it. Uh, like I'm talking, I fucking hate it. I'd rather take an ass whooping than run away from a fight, right? Um, eat, like, you know, that's how much I hate running, but I did it in the army every fucking day, every day. And I hated it every single time, but it's just the sacrifice you make to, to accomplish the things that you're wanting to accomplish. So if trading is one of these things that you're wanting to make a full-time position or, or become your, your forte or your go-to a little short covering there on the 52. So they tried to hold that 5150. They're coming back down here. A little bit of a battle going on right here. But if you, if this is something that you're trying to trying to make a, a realistic income or a income replacement, and you're not putting in the work outside of this stream, thinking that I'm going to be able to just you know walk you through the door. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. It's it's just not going to work that way. I'd love to be able to do that, right? Um, I. I get satisfaction off seeing all of you guys pass these funded account challenges, passing all of the, uh, you know, all of the, um, uh, like, or, or having good trades and stuff. I, I love seeing that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't take credit for it because I'm not the one doing the work. And that's the thing is that, like I always say, and I steal it from the Matrix, I can only show you the door. You've got to walk through it, right? I can't read the fucking book for you. I can't watch the boot camps for you. I can't take your trades for you. I can't manage your trades for you. I can't I can't understand your emotions for you. You've got to do all these things your on your own. Right? And and I've been I've been, you know, pounding this into my friend Jared's head for eight months now and, and it's barely just starting to click. And I'm on his shit. Like I'm mean to Jared. And Jared pisses me the fuck off sometimes. And so then I get even more mean. And and you know what I mean? Like I that's that's because he's my friend and I and I know he can take it. But I'm not gonna get like that with you guys online. It's just not it's just not who I am, right? Um But it, it does take time and it, it takes longer for things to click. One one reason I think my dad has been so successful in his journey, especially early on he you know because he's really grasped the concept very quick is one he didn't have any bad habits right he didn't come from crypto and wasn't trading le over leveraged and uh kind of in, in a in a trending market right a lot of these crypto traders they're fucking experts because the market was just going straight up and then it started going straight down so they were experts again and now that it's not doing that they don't know how to trade in a, in a market that's not trending. And that's really the sign of a, a true trader or someone who actually knows what they're doing. If you can trade in a choppy market, then a trend market is going to be easy for you, right? Unless you don't have your psychology on lock and you just trade against the trend the entire time. And then you're going to be, you know, fucking miserable. But it's, uh, it, it, it helps. I mean, that's why I think for him, because his psychology is in check and that atomic habits really helped him and he comes from a poker background and he's played a lot of cards in his life so he understands odds and probabilities so the risk management thing was easy for him to pick up on minus all the uh, bad habits that a lot of traders that are just picking up the profile have he had none of those and and uh you know he he kind of just blindly believed that uh that profile was the way you know what I mean? And that helped him a lot, I think. Yeah, Mind Over Markets is the first book. And then Markets and Profile is the second book. So I'd read Mind Over Markets first. <laughs> I feel like you're talking about me. No, Kevin, I'm not talking about you. So look at value here. We're starting to develop value above balance. Look where our four TPOs are at now. Let's see if we're going to get a little cessation of one time framing or if these sellers are going to show up. We saw them try to show up around this 51 half area but no real conviction and now this c high is mechanical and the d high is mechanical starting to get a little bit of uptick from our weighted sectors here and you can see our unweighted is actually leading the upside here who lost 700 bucks today i got you beat um 
let me see, on my Tesla puts that I'm holding like a psycho. Well, not like a psycho. I'll say like a fucking, like an idiot. But um, they are down 745 dollars. Hey, hey, hush. Gordon. Oh, poor guy. Seven, seven forty-eight. Yeah. Yeah, thousand down. Guess we were heading to Brad Camp. <laughs> No, I'm. I mean, I'm up on futures, so that's making up for it. I, I use I use those options kind of because I got to get that uh, I got to get that that gambling out of my system. You know what I mean? D high still mechanical here. I'm up. Yeah, I'm up on futures. That's just down on the Tesla puts. I bought some Tesla puts on Tuesday. And then didn't close them out by the end of the day. They were up about 10%. And I was actually on the phone. So I kind of blamed my dad for it. Because um, I was talking with him. But I can't really blame him for it. I just didn't realize that the market was closing. Uh, you know, we were just conversing. And then by the time we got off the phone, it was like 15 minutes after the close. And I was kind of stuck with them. And then the next day they opened up. They were down. And I was like, well, fuck it. I'll just hold them until they expire. So let's look for the next best trade here, right? Next best trade is if this, you know, there's actually, there's actually two, right? So let's see this D come down. It doesn't break this Globex low. Find some volume or find some rejection here. <coughs> excuse me, rejection here of this 51 half, 50 half, 51 half. And then target that open where that volume's at, um, you know, and try to try to utilize this Globex low as our, as our stop. Um, which is where all this volume was at. You might have to, you might want to hide a little bit lower at that 46 and then, you know, to repair that poor high. Because we had a look below, it's a lot of excess, still mechanical on the top, telling us that buyers really haven't decided that they're going to uh, show up heavy yet, but there's still some opportunity for both sides with this kind of mixed bag that we're getting today. And then to the downside, excuse me, if we start to get accepted below this B low and start to fill in some of this area, that's what I'd like to see to get some continuation to the downside. I'd like to see us get down below this B low. I'd like to see some volume start to pour in here. And then that would give me what I'm looking for to trade back down towards that C low. And then really that 4120 was that big level from yesterday. But you're having, you know, a chop area kind of right here with opportunity but for the short side right now is not really the best spot to try to just get short what happened oh you're down 740 are you trading the es mes you're down 740 today on the mes how many lots are you trading? Five. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. Five. So you're basically tricked. trading like half an ES. Half an ES.
All right, so let's see. Their target here is the open. They were able to hold that level there. They're going to target the open now. Offer still trying to come down on this 53 quarter, though. So they're still trying to hold it. Battle on that 53 half, 53 quarter level. Not able to get up there. So no conviction here, right? So we're seeing a bunch of volume come in back and forth. Uh, you're seeing the the tick really get negative here, right? This is a cumulative tick on the NYSE. It's starting to pick up, right? Pink is more, yellow is less. Or uh, actually, let's change it to let's change it to red and green real quick because that's going to confuse the shit out of me. Um, yeah, pink is positive. Yeah, so let's just change that to green. Red can be negative. Okay. Yeah, so we're seeing, you know, it's still continuing a little bit more negative, but the market really hasn't made any decisive uh, action to the downside. Just kind of balancing over here, really building value inside those single prints from yesterday. See if we can get back to the VWAP. Yeah, AMD is just still killing it. Yeah, emotions. I mean, that's like I always say. I think emotions Frickin are the biggest jerks. thing in trading. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe they're, I can't believe they're taking this thing up. <laughs> I think that I think I I don't know if I'm more mad at myself for selling the ones that were doing well, or mad at myself for holding onto the ones from yesterday that weren't doing well, and I should have sold when it when it said. This is why the bot for me is so much better and I just need to just let the bot do its effing job. Yeah, especially I because mean, the back test on the bot was great. Well, here's the deal though. So yesterday it would have lost 640 bucks, but today it's up 660 bucks. So it would have been a wash. It would have been a freaking wash. But in my brain, I said, oh, if I hold on, I, I'm sure I can beat that. And if I had actually sold it right at open like I did that one day, I think I would have been a, I would have been a little bit better off, but it's just yeah I don't know. It's that whole idea of oh I can I can squeeze another twenty bucks out of this thing. I'm just gonna let this thing get to the point where it's not so in the red. Uh, it looks like we're hitting a dip right now. 
Oh, well, that's a good dip. Holy cow, that's a good dip. AMD's coming down? It's a little over 50 cents, a little over 50 cents down. 52. And it just kept going up and up. And I was like, oh man, why am I taking heat? And then it came back to balance and I'm like trying to close it. And then it just sure, kept adding was that orders. Today? Yeah. Yeah, mine did the same thing early, early on. Yeah. I had to oh. go, I had to go into rhythmic trader and flatten all my positions. I, I just flattened right now at 46. <laughs> yeah, that, that was hella weird. It kept adding and adding and adding and I couldn't fucking get out of it. Yeah, I kept adding my orders, and I was like, "No, no, I'm I'm not doing this again. <laughs> one and two, that's all I'm doing. You know, one or two watts at a time." And man, it just kept adding my orders, and I was like, "Fucking what? You know, stop this!" <laughs> Finally, it uh, yeah, I just went and flattened it, but now I'm like scared to death to enter again. You know. <laughs> I closed my Ninja Trader and reopened it. Yeah, that's probably where I should start. I'm going to keep the uh, Rhythmic open on their website in case I got to flatten again. But one time this happened to me a few weeks ago, and you can only flatten so many times before it makes you wait like five, 10 minutes or something. Yep. And it, yeah, it's not fun when you're, I mean, it's okay if you're in a winning trade and it's like forcing you to just stay in it and not take profit. But if you're in a loser, it's it's not fun. And it did happen to me on Bybit. I couldn't get a trade to close for nothing. Market trade, trade everything. We got with, with the support. I'm like, hey, man, I think it's, and I was at 1500 bucks. It was going down, 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 down. And they're like, well, we'll, we'll, leave, we'll email our tech. I like, no, I need to get out right now. Like, <laughs> you know, we'll wait for email. And finally, I, I don't know why I didn't think before, but I finally got on the phone app and was able to close it. It, was, it ended up being 300 down instead of 1500 up. And would they, would they pay me? No. He goes on support and saying, hey, look, it's happening right, right this second. They even videotape the whole thing. And, yeah. Now I know the way. I know the best way to test it, though. I'm, I'm just going to go on the MES and put on one lot. And if it don't close, then I'll just wait until I can flatten again. But it ain't worth it to do it on the ES. Ugh, that could get ugly quick. So checking back down into this volume area. So this is the area where we'd kind of like to see it hold and start to build volume to get some continuation to the downside. We tried to go back up there, take that high. All right, Dan, catch you later, man. Have a good day. Another 25 points off the VWAP, Jason. How many lots are you playing? 25 points. Only down like, what's that? Seven points? Alex said, I feel like they, I need to start completely over with my education. I can't wrap my head around the auction process. It's I'm not sure if it's because of the lingo or what, but I just can't get it, especially when it comes to making entries. I come up with a trade plan, but I don't ever think this is the moment I've been waiting for. Even when you yourself are getting in on the same trade, I thought of, I just don't know what I'm looking at. There's always something that keeps me out of the trade, then I end up getting in at the wrong trade. Th that sounds, That sounds like... So your like personal psychology, which is you know, it's a that's a tough, it's a tough obstacle to uh, to overcome. And um, you know, I, I wish I could kind of point you in the. Oh, you're talking about twenty five points total. Okay, twenty five points total for the day, Jason. Or are you talking? Just the VWAP's only like only like a fifty. It was like fifty to. 42 that's like eight points times two is 16. um yeah i mean it, it's it's really just trying to just grab a control of your own psychology uh, it's not psychology uh, Right. The boot camp is more macro. Yeah. And so, and, and that's the thing is like, um, oh, you're trading NASDAQ futures. Okay. Um, the, that, that's kind of like one of the things I was talking about as far as like, um, 
getting to that point, right? I think that you, and that's what this new class is all about. And I'm, I am trying to finish it as fast as I can, but the, there's like three specific sectors individually that you have to master. And one of them being actually taking the trade, right? Because there's so many people, right? And I'll, I'll use Jared for an example. Jared's always like, oh, this is, this is a good ass fucking trade right here blah 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 and then you know we, we don't think about it for a couple weeks and we look two weeks later and we're like damn that was a good trade right but nobody traded it and it it becomes like that execution piece and that's that kind of the final key to meshing all of these puzzle pieces together to see the complete picture and then turning into what i consider a risk manager <laughs> fuck off james about that I'm trying. It's just it, the class is. As I keep working on the class, I keep like new nuances pop in my head, and I'm like, "Fuck, I need to add this," and I'm like, "Fuck, I need to add this," and then and then all of a sudden I'm like, I start rereading it. And I'm like, "Ah, it's not good enough." Eventually, it'll be done. Coming down into the thin area on the profile of sellers don't come in. I think we can look for a fade. Hell yeah, Tommy. Oh, I mean, kind of already went out, but yeah. Sorry, I saw that. I saw that late. All right, Jason, we'll catch you later, man. And then above this, this is that thin spot earlier, this uh, 4950, where you saw the buyers that were battling up at that 52 half capitulate. So above that, if these sellers don't hold us above that, or below that, excuse me, then they'll go for a chance at the upside. But now we do have a, a D high that's mechanical and a D low that's mechanical coming right off yesterday's half back. Typically a mechanical low... Or a mechanical level that's off of the half back though is and can be a bit stronger um than than other mechanical references not saying that it's going to hold but it typically can be a little bit stronger than other mechanical references wait say that again so so typically Typically, you know, a mechanical level off of a half back is a bit stronger than if it was like a D low is on the C half back. This is not the half back of the day, right? So we're in pushing down into this lower distribution. That's where that half back is at, and buyers stepped up. And you saw that it was buyers, and maybe combined with a little bit of short covering, but because of how rapidly it came back up. And now here they are filling in that weak spot above that 49 49 half and then that next one is that this 5150 was an area they offered before but it doesn't look like they're going to reoffer it so it looks like they might just keep uh keep on keeping on here and then their target is going to be that open and really that poor high honestly and we are coming in you got to think we are coming into the end of the week tomorrow's friday typically going into friday you get a lot of people closing out options which typically tends to be a little bit more bullish for the market um as far as you know people aren't typically putting on new shorts right at the end of the week because they never know what's going to happen over the weekend right nancy pelosi get back on her jet and fly back to taiwan um you know so they don't want to be you know, you know you don't want to be putting on a bunch of risk leading into uh leading into a weekend so typically that's where you either start to hedge and if you're short then you're going to be buying um or you start taking off risk and and i think most of the retail crowd is short uh you know because they don't understand basic market principles but and they could just not be day trading like we are you know what i mean like we're uh we're intraday trading we're not really swing trading Buying tail and a poor high, yeah. Good identification there, James. So we've got this buying tail. We have a, a poor high, which is a weak reference. D high is a weak reference, right? We do have a mechanical low off that D low, but like I said, that half back sometimes can be a little bit stronger than a typical mechanical position, right? Like, so let's say if this D high was off the settle, that's not going to really show as much strength as it does off of a half back. And same thing inversely, right? If this was the D high was off the half back and we were trading lower, it could still act as a little bit stronger uh, reference. 
Tommy, did you take that trade? Yeah, since it came straight off the half back. Fuck. The bots are back. Second. Damn, dude, what's up with these fucking. My bad, Tom. Let me go. Um, you're seeing it just kind of flip flop back and forth, so really no conviction. Then Vold's coming back up to the zero. The, oh, this is Tesla. Where's the triple Q at? Triple Q is still kind of squarely in that range, but still pretty. Pretty uh, decently below that open and a poor high as well for the triple Q. More liquidation on that 48 there again. So buyer's not able to get anything going either. And we're starting to spend time down here. But let's say E period opens up. We're going to have a shift in point of control. So we've got our... Depend. We've got our four TPOs right from here to here, right? Point of control is right in the middle, or there's a value right in the middle. Um, if we get E period, which opens up in five minutes here, E period opens up, you know, let's say it opens up here, or our point of control is going to shift down. And right now, value is just overlapping. We're still just inside yesterday's value area, 100% inside yesterday's value area. And look at the tick too. The tick, you know, buyers really haven't been able to get anything going. So there has been somebody just trying to absorb. They just haven't made any follow through or any progress to the downside, which just shows how weak they are for for today. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they can't catch a liquidation break either. Weak spot on the profile, forty-eight quarter. Russian court finds Brittany Griner a million rubles. And they sentenced her to nine years in jail. Damn. She's bummed. So let's just wait about four minutes and see what E period gives us. I think that'll give us some information. Remember, E period has been the the lazy period lately too, where we we haven't got a lot of uh, a lot of action. But for the most part, D period has just been balancing, and we've really just been kind of balancing, overlapping on this balance area. Let's see if they can break this D low here. We are seeing some volume start to move lower, but still kind of mostly coming in around this 47 level, which is, you know, kind of right on that, uh, right on that level. TJ messaged me on Discord. 
me see. Oh, okay. I was like, I didn't message Brad. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'll look at it in a minute, Bob. So we're looking like we're balancing just above the previous balance. No real strength to push it back down or continue higher. Yeah, exactly. Like we're going to get some overlapping balance. Thirty seconds. Ugh. Nine seconds. Here we go. Let's see what E period's got for us. Market's trying to make us fall asleep here. Watch the 49 level. 40... Eight, yeah, 48 to 49 level. That's where you got that capitulation from the buyers above and they started liquidating. So above that, you figure momentum shorts are hiding their stops right above that level, probably at the 51 half again. So if we get above there, that 49, you can expect maybe a little bit of short covering again. Volume's still trying to come in. They're just not making any progress here. The breath is pretty muted. Cumulative tick is still down, so there's still seller kind of sitting on that zero level. Amazon's kind of gassing here too. Where's the mouse at? That just jumped up from like 140 to 141. So it's kind of a, I mean, a dollar move is still a pretty decent move for a stock. So selling came in, they defend that 49. You can see how thin this 49 is, and that's where the half back of the day is at too. It's volume coming in lower. Looks like sellers might have got trapped on that 4475 on that low tick. I have no trade on it too, in case anyone was wondering. Does the fact that we are below the daily open and keep chasing, keep closing lower, would not indicate that there is more possibility for downside? Yeah, so like as of right now, right, the, the point of control is shifting down, especially comparatively, right, our point of control yesterday was here, up here at the 50, was this like 57, right? And so now we're getting a lower point of control um, and we're starting to develop value a little bit lower, but we're still inside yesterday's value. So there's really, you know, really it's kind of a, a, a wash. There's no real conviction by either side and it's hard to decide if... Uh, you know, it's hard to really t say like, hey, we're going to go down, we're going to go up or, or to really believe in either side at this point. Really, the market today has mostly just been choppy. And as we're coming back up to this 49, if, if you don't see these sellers start to fill in this level, we can probably expect a little bit of short covering here and might the market might catch a, a little bit of a pop.
We look like we are balancing just about previous. Oh, I already read that. Oh, I gotta open up Ninja Trader real quick. For me, this is kind of like what Brad had mentioned a while back, like this no man zone. Like, don't don't get caught trying to guess where you think it's going to go. Don't try to don't feel like you have to be in a trade. Like, this is one of those times where the bar, the market's kind of bouncing out, and you want to just wait for it to choose a direction and then go with it. So, like for me, I'm waiting to see if if E can't take the top of C and that D that like weak high right there, then I'm going to think that we're probably going to start one time framing down. Um, but if, if we can't take that D low um, and we get over the open, um, then we'll probably be attacking that, that poor high. That's kind of my thoughts. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think, you know, the biggest thing is, is that patience. And that's what gets most people into trouble or a lot of people into trouble is that they don't have the patience to just wait for the market to confirm for them. Right. So if you're if you've got a bias, regardless of your bias is downside or upside or kind of what how you're interpreting the order flow that's coming in, you know, you're more susceptible to a bigger loss if you are jumping in a short here and just kind of, you know, almost hoping that it is going to go down. Right. Um, and, and then let's say it goes against you. And this is just either or right. It could down or up. But um um either or could be you know a, a push up a push down but if, if you decide to get into let's say you get into your short right now like tj's looking for that to confirm his short if your psychology is not on point and you're not willing to part with a losing trade a lot of times the market will just start running against you but you're just so you know narrow focused or got tunnel vision that you won't you won't let it go so it'd be better off to like he's saying let it confirm let it break this d low and let it get get some volume back down here where there's this weak volume and then get short right and then you have somewhere to put your stop a more a more you know uh more structured based stop right you could use the globex low or you could use the globex point of control instead of just getting short here and this thing could rotate up above the globex point of control and then rotate back down there's really no no spot yet to uh for confirmation yeah for me too like yesterday i was posting um just trying to share some stuff you know about like risk management right so like ideally for me it's always better for me to get in a trade at the opposite side right so if i see the price action so if i see e come up to that c and d high and it can't take that then that's where I would like to get short. And then I have a tight stop, you know, one, two points um, to kind of ride that down or, so that's ideally, right? So maybe I go full size in a scenario like that because I have a tight stop. Um, if, I'm, if, if I miss that or it don't come up and I see E taking the D low and I think it's gonna keep driving down, then I might still get in the trade if I think that it's gonna go down, but I'm only gonna take one lot because that's low risk for me versus full size or whatever. So um just thoughts there just managing you know because if you get in the bottom it could still rotate all the way back up to that d high and then you're just taking a whole heat for no reason right I think patience one of your biggest problems. I get bored and start to trying to qualify any possible trade. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I definitely get that for sure. And that's just you know comes. That's why you know that's why I have the Legos that I'm using now, or get a fidget spinner, or do something to you know keep your keep your brain busy, that you can still you know or keep your hands busy, but you can still keep your eyes on the chart. Patience gets you paid. Patience gets you paid, that is a fact. Uh, 
Let's see if they can get some volume back below that T2 low here. Or T2 high, excuse me. Really thin on this way down. Showing a bit of liquidation, short covering on that 42 quarter. Doesn't take the D low. So mechanical low still, mechanical high still with the poor high up above. 4120 is your low target if it hits. Yeah. Yeah, that's that would be a good spot to, to target for sure. Typically, if you have to take a trade on a day like today, you want to take it from the edges of the profile because of being rotation. Yeah, definitely true. And I mean, if you just look at the profile, especially when it's uh, not expanded, right? For the most part, we do kind of have a balanced profile. So there they go. They fix that, that poor low here. Let's see if they get continuation. And I would say we're still one time framing down, to be honest. I don't really consider a tick uh, to say one time framing like to see some more conviction look at the tick it's getting pretty negative here came back to watch jason cool glad to have you bro anytime anytime oh big trades there i think i might have missed it looks like two thousand lots down here on the 40 a lot of volume just getting absorbed here. Holy shit. Oh, there's a lot of volume coming in on that 40 right there. A lot. <laughs> like a lot, like a lot, a lot. There's some absorption down there for sure, it looked like. I can't tell if that was short covering or, or what, but there was a lot of trades that came through on that 40 right there, all, all kind of random, randomly. Look at look how big that volume is. Man, on the thirty on the last thirty minute profile on the right, it says four thousand lots right there. Yeah, that was crazy. And they traded on the ask oh, too. Really? Back down below the 40 here, back to it. Brad, could that be uh, the big seller from earlier closing out some of their position down there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Could that be. was big earlier, wasn't it? It was a, oh, a thousand five hundred or something. I never really see that much on the buy side. It's always on the sell side. Yeah, I yeah I agree. I haven't seen big orders like that trade in a decent amount of time, to be honest. T one or T two is target one or two. No, T one is yesterday, and T two is two days ago. So like right here it says T2 high, that's two days ago's high, which is right here. And then T1 would be yesterday and T2 would be two days ago. I don't have like three and four. I should add them just when we're in balance, it just makes sense, but... Hey Brad, can you give an honest opinion on Sierra versus Ninja of Ninja, but have been considering switching? Um, You know... It really is just depending upon how much work you want to put into learning. If you're on Ninja, how much work you want to put into learning Sierra. Because Sierra Charts is not super user-friendly, but if you have good research ability abilities, then you know pretty much anything is easy if you're good at if you have good research ability. And that's it's something that I have. It's a skill that I developed in the army, be having, you know, to do so much research. Um 
but you know if you're not if you're looking for something that's an easy transition it's not i do i do specifically like um the uh sierra charts because one it comes with a tpo and it's really customizable once you once you get a grip on it um whereas uh ninja trader pretty much everything is an add-on um you know but it's uh i i can't i can't really just say like this one's better than the other to be honest with you i feel like if i if i didn't have access to sierra charts I would have no problem going back to Ninja. You know what I mean? Like, I don't hate Ninja. It's just that when I switched to Sierra after I learned how to use it, I just like it. The longer we spend above this 40, I think the better the odds are that this thing rotates back up into the high. Cause that was a that was a lot of lots. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of add-ons. Yeah. Um, I just bought all the I bought like the ultimate package for Rancho de Nero, so that way I just had everything. But that's the thing is like if you don't have a lot of capital, then when you're on Ninja Trader, starting off, it it becomes a little bit more uh expensive right but sierra charts i pay um what is it like 53 bucks a month or something like that um that's every month whereas ninja trader you pay a thousand bucks you get the lifetime license you pay another thousand bucks you get all your tpo volume profile that bullshit from rancho and there's two thousand bucks and if you take 53 times let's see you know let's see uh let's do let's do 50 let's just do We'll do 55. We'll round it up. Um, divided by 2,000 is, you know, 36. So that's three three years it would take to kind of to add up to that recoup, right? And in the long scheme of things, if trading is going to be your future or your go-to, you know, three years is really not that long. Um, but then also you know 55 bucks a month is just one point on the es so if you can make one point a month or 10 points on the mes you're going to pay for that anyways and same thing for an ninja trader so it's just a matter of having the money up front i think is what drives a lot of people to sierra charts is they don't have the money up front um ninja trader could do a lot better job on um uh customer service like I've been messaging them shit fucking pretty much once a month or if not more every month since Windows 11 came out because I wanted to be able to look at stocks on the TPO on my Ninja Trader and when they switched it they didn't update the um what are they called the fucking plugins or whatever they are called um I can't remember what they're called, but whatever they did, they didn't, they didn't upgrade them. And so then, you know, we get kind of stuck on having to API. There we go, James. Thanks. St the, they didn't update the APIs and they were just like, well, I don't know. And then I asked my uncle, who's a computer wizard, and he's like, it's a pretty fucking easy thing to do. And so then I just kept messaging them at least once a month being like hey when are you guys going to fucking update this so i can use what i paid for because i have the multi brokers license and it's like you know i didn't buy the multi brokers license to not be able to look at stocks through ninja trader um but it's working now so but you win that is a shit test especially when you're start i mean it's a lot of money but just when you start down there's so many different applications when you're trying all of them to see which one you like it's a lot of money but just you know try it out you know right know. and and that's the thing that kind of sucks about ninja trader as well is like you don't when you get the free trial for ninja trader you don't get to use chart trader you don't get to use their order flow tools so you're really not getting to feel the platform or get a good feel of the platform um until you actually buy the full platform and that's kind of you know but if you already have the lifetime license i mean you're already you're already you're already good 
I just kind of, uh, you know, let my little brother use mine since I'm not using it. So it doesn't go to waste. So here's that 51 half again, where we've seen an offer come in before. Sierra's customer service, they're good. Yeah. I mean, they, they mostly, the only thing about Sierra charts is like, if you're looking for someone to solve your problem, they're not gonna, they're gonna be like, hey, cause there's an article about fucking everything on Sierra charts. Like you can Google like pretty much everything that goes on within Sierra charts. And so they're just gonna give you the link to the article. COVID killed customer service. <laughs> Dang, I missed this long, Brad. <laughs> it's all right. There'll be more. So, the whole time I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm just waiting for a short. And I'm like, I'm waiting for this thing to lose some steam. And it just keeps going up. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> should have probably been in a long, but I'm just trying to stay on one side today. But it is true, though. All these companies figured out how to work with skeleton crews and then they never went back. And they're to be called, you know, everything's, oh, because of COVID, it's going to take us, you know, eight times as long. I went to the bank, they literally had one person this entire bank. I couldn't believe it. No one worked. Yeah, Sierra Charts is very direct. They're like, yeah, dumbass, read this fucking article. It's in there. And then if you can't figure it out, they're like, it's not my fault that you're a dumbass. You know? Because I've, I've had some back and forth with them and try, been trying to figure stuff out when I first started. And it's like, they're like, can you not read? And I'm like, fuck, man. Like, I can't read. Like, I don't why, know why you're discriminating against me. <laughs> and I got to fucking call I think James. That's, I think that's because uh, their programmers are the same. They're their customer service guys are their programmers. So it comes easy to them. They, they're, you know what I mean? They don't want to deal with people. Right. I don't know why they do that. Though. They should have customer service people. But they make their programmers do what I think. From what I hear, anyway. And that would make sense yeah and it, it is it's just very direct you know and for me from being from california california is not like a very direct place you don't meet a ton of people that are real direct it's not like the east coast where people just tell you how it is they're not trying to fucking chit chat with you they're they're like hey this is what's going on and, and they're not being mean that's just they're just being direct and that's kind of how how the customer service is too it's just like hey this is this is the deal and that would make sense, like you're saying, Roach, like, you know, if they are programmers, they're not used to talking with people. You know, they live in a fucking dark closet and eat sunscreen and shit, so. Until they stay so pale. Yeah, they're in their mother's basement. They don't want to be bothered <laughs> with people, you know what I mean? Here's where it is, you stupid bastard, that's it. <laughs> Let's see if they can pop the open this time. This is, uh, it looks like, you know, that, like I said, that order, I don't know, that was a suspicious order. If they pop the open, there's definitely good odds that they repair this poor high too. So if you are short and you decided to get short at the lows and you're holding on for your dear life, just be careful here. And if you're just trading, you know, if you're just looking for only one trade, you know, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice, Jared. Um, I mean, not, not to say that, you know, there's not opportunities to short. It's just if you got short in this chop area and you're ho hoping that it's going to come back for you, you're, you're taking a lot more risk than you necessarily need to. The Amazon breaking out. Look at AMD just on a fucking well, tear. My plan originally was to uh, short at 155. And then... Now I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this thing's going to lose steam or not. I mean, right now it would work, but uh, it's like, yeah, I don't know if it's, it's so done let's hear, here. Let's hear in the chat. If you short at 155, what would you consider yourself? What type of trader? Mm, an uneducated one. No, I'm just trying to see if it breaks the E. Uh, then, I don't know. I probably could keep running, but I I was going to short at 14. Was it one? 54.75. I was going to go at the top of uh, D, but it broke it 
and that's why I'm like, uh, I don't know. All right, that's an anchor trade, mechanical trading, right? A weak, a weaker handed trader, someone who's taking a trade looking to scalp. And there's nothing wrong with taking anchor trades. I'm not bashing on Jared, but you just have to know if you take that trade and it goes a point in your direction, you need to take that profit. Right? You don't need to try to sit in here and hope that it's the bottom's going to fall out if you're getting in from an anchored position. Yeah, that's a great point. That's uh, one of the things I was trying to talk about yesterday was knowing what style of trade you're going for because you don't need to be holding three lots trying to get five or ten points if it's a quick scalp trade. You, know, you need to be in and out all three, take your money and get out of there. Exactly. So if you took that trade right there and now you're a point in profit, right? You took it off the open and now you're a point in profit. Yeah, it could keep going down, but you're the longer you hold on to that trade, the bigger risk that you're taking to with, with that trade, right? You took the trade, you know it's an anchor trade unless you don't have the open up on your chart, um then you got to you got to get out of there, right? Especially because I'm about to trap you motherfuckers that are shorting off the open and take this thing up to that poor high. So keep shortening it if you want. <laughs> Offer's still moving down here right below the open. So you're seeing people really try to hold this open. They're just not doing a good job. Remember that 63 is where that volume came in yesterday and in the overnight session. So that would be that first target up, right where that poor high is at, where we could expect some mechanical sellers to show back up. But I, I mean, there's really no strength on either side here. So fading this highs is not necessarily a bad trade. You just want to, you know, like TJ saying, know what you're doing, right? Don't just get in there and expect it to just keep rolling, rolling, rolling. And it might, right? There's just no way to know, but You've got to think about the trade that you're taking in that situation. So if you're in a short here, you're you're really looking for it to trade below this 4152 here. And if it doesn't get below that 4152, then you've got to be willing to just part with that trade. And same thing if you're in a long. If you're in a long, your stop should be at 52, maybe maybe 51 half, and if it gets below that, you should be willing to just part with that long. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking for basically them to come down, find the bid. My, I'm just uh, waiting for Brad. Dude, uh, I'm looking for them to come down a little bit, catch a bid, and then maybe continue, up, hopefully. I'm just waiting for Brad to be like, sellers are trapped here. I'm like, shit, <laughs> I'm trapped. <laughs> <laughs> I already know. It's trapped. Trying. Yeah, yeah, Brad's going to be like, okay, so sellers are trapped right here at the 55. I'm going to be like, fuck. Oh. <laughs> You're seeing a lot of offers try to come down and hold this open. And really, that buyer that was down below at the 40, I mean, we just saw how powerful that move is. We're 14 handles above that 40. And we basically just went straight up on fairly thin volume, if you think about it. And if you look at it, you know, the volume isn't, isn't huge on that way up. But you can look at it here comparatively, especially in these high volume areas where you would expect some sellers who were stronger to try to come in. You didn't see them. Right. And so with a mechanical E high, you know, like I said, I'm I'm just sitting here just scooping all you motherfuckers up and about to take this thing up to to the high. And by motherfuckers I mean Jared. Uh yeah, Reyes, you can check out the stream on Twitch. Less of a delay there. Or if you're in the Discord, you could just jump in the Zoom. There's less of a delay on Zoom. Yeah, it looks like they're trapping buyers above the 55. Yeah. Could be. Get out. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. <laughs> so sellers are trying to offer this 55, 54, 75 level. You just need to see them get below the 50 one half to, to get a little bit of control, honestly.
there is a lot of people lifting the offer up here and not making any any push up either so you could be seeing these buyers get a little bit tired right here they should i mean honestly if you if you if we're really focused on it you know they should get some continuation here pretty shortly there's just you know only 30 seconds left until f period opens up and that that's possibly what they could be waiting for we see the triple Qs breaking out above uh above those levels and looking to maybe trade back up to that poor high So here's F period. Let's see. Let me look at the volume in in uh in period. The volume's really cooled off big time. About even with the volume yesterday in that last period. So we're, the volume's really slowed down. So I think that the downside might be over. Maybe one more break to try to trap a bunch more, like they did at that 40. That's just not something I've seen very often, so I honestly don't really know how to interpret it. Just back and forth across the open here. No one really willing to make the decision yet. But look at the breath is starting to pick up a little bit. You can see the weighted sectors starting to pick up a little bit. Even the volts trying to come up. You're seeing the tick actually finally get some closes above the zero. Let's see if they're going to break. Really poor high here still. And a weak high on this EF high. Ugh. But it is about that time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Warden. Warden. Ruining my, my outro here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. <laughs> Jesus. Warden. Come here. Come here. I think the kids are back. You can hear them. Warden. Oh, Jesus. Enough. All right. I'm going to go ahead and call it here. It's time to get some lunch, right? Warden seems like he needs to go outside. I'm going to take the kids into the pool. Um, you know, see, they're, uh, they're gonna, they're gonna want to swim. Of course, it's going to be 94 degrees here today. So, uh, but going Thank into, you, thanks, uh, going into the rest of the today, right. Just to kind of look at, at what we're seeing, we're seeing a fairly balanced profile, right? We're, we're getting a little bit of balance above that 47, right? We have our point of control up here. We've got six TPO. So our, our point of control is still up above the balance area, remember our, our point of control from yesterday is 47, point of control here, really six TPOs is, you know, either 41 to um, to 40, 51 to 54, so either or. Um, Warden, fuck. Uh, and that's kind of, uh, you know, that that's kind of telling us we really haven't got any confirmation of buyers stepping up or or sellers stepping down um we haven't really seen capitulation from some of these sellers that got heavy up absorbing above balance yesterday right and weakness from buyers on on both sides uh except for that 4140 so if we do get below that 4140 
that's when you're going to start looking to you know maybe target the that 4120 down here that's been a big level in this lower balance and that would you know almost kind of confirm and probably cause a bit of liquidation below that above this poor high you'll probably get liquidation of these sellers uh in yesterday's upper uh upper range other than that you guys have a wonderful day make sure that you are managing risk and sticking to your trade plan if you do not have a trade plan don't trade and if you don't know how to make a trade plan jump in the trade uh or jump in the discord and and jump in uh ask some ask around or check out some other people's trade plans uh, other than that you guys have a wonderful day and i will catch you guys later Later, brother. Later, bro. Yes. Later. Later, guys.